episode 126 of a touchline run. We are joined this week by... It's not a special guest anymore. It's not anymore, to be honest. But yeah. CSK is Fire Guns Captain. Yes, he is. Who we mm. humbly, very humbly, humbly sponsor. sponsor. Do you want to know what we're talking about this week? Yeah. Buzz Premier through. League Quick. matches. What are the picks? What are the duds? We're yeah. going to have a look. Goalkeepers. Thank you. This one is not going to shut up. Then we're going to look at the fan protests in Germany. Anything else? That's it. Should we? Yeah, play. Should we start Wolves there? Let's start Wolves. If we're looking at pure Wolves worst case very, scenarios very of Wolves this stats. season, even if they don't make like one well, in the last 16 now, if they don't make it through to there and still remain in, in the top five or around there, that's still a really successful season. Everything to this point has already been a success. I've just come back from Barca and the atmosphere amongst everybody is just, you've never seen a happier group of fans. It's just the perfect mm-hmm. time. It's amazing. So with um, that momentum, why not? Why yeah, not? Why not why go not? big? You've I, got I everything. That... You've got everything in your in your ammunition to to really hit the mark. I think that the way Wolves have set up, if they get Champions League football this season, which I believe they will, with the contacts that they have and the way that they're so good at doing business already, if you add in Champions League money to that, they could make some serious waves in the transfer market in January. Because they can then compete, more than compete with players, teams like Spurs. Like Wolves will be able to compete Thumbs far up more for than Wolves Spurs. Then. Thumbs on. up for Wolves. It's a Harry's class, but I think we can all agree that Sahar needs to play in a better team Come to on see then. the best team. Arsenal, West Ham. Uh, right, well, Palace, Watford. Who are we going with? Nil, nil. Yeah, one I nil. was thinking a draw. Nil, one, nil. one nil, Palace. Arsenal, West Ham, okay. West Ham, fans rioting again. But for this one, I think Arsenal win. Uh, I think they will, but I don't think it'll be straightforward. No, I it's think going to be difficult. Moyes has proved himself well this week because I think the way he managed the press with uh, Jared Bowen, they tried yes. to push him and say, why aren't you using this man? He could be your saviour. He took the pressure off, then started him, and he was fantastic. Liverpool, Bournemouth. Now, Liverpool, obviously, as we've said, are just coming off the back. Well, two losses, but the first loss in the league of this season uh, got hammered by Watford, and then they lost to Chelsea in the FA Cup. Three losses, Atletico. Oh, yeah, they lo- People are worrying, but this is what they're going for. They're going no, for the league. I think they will beat Bournemouth, but I just like the idea of Bournemouth you know, going after Liverpool again and seeing Liverpool on the back foot for one. Uh, we should talk the Manchester talk Derby. That's a big old game. Man they United, beat Real Madrid at home. If Man United can Phenomenal. Beat, yeah, it's amazing. Man United can beat Man City right now. That'll do, it could do wonders because we've got Spurs away as well. <laughs> this Man City side is there to be caught on the break. And I think United, as I've said countless times, are very, very, very good on the break. Burnley Spurs, potential banana skin for Mourinho. And Burnley Dyche against Mourinho, clash of styles. Oh, I think like, I, That's I my think kind of live game, that is. I Burnley Spurs. Burnley, Burnley win that. Yeah, 2 0. I'm a big Chris Wood fan. So am I. Mm. I think he'll get both. <laughs> Goalkeepers. It's goalkeepers union goalkeepers. Let's talk. Let's sell. This has been triggered. <laughs> this has been triggered for the sake of Sunes and Roy Keane all at the same time, which just angered me so much to the point of I just need to step in and clear the name of good old goalkeeping. First and foremost, Roy Keane knows nothing about goalkeepers. Oh my god. Nothing about him. Nothing. He doesn't know anything about it. I just want to say that neither myself nor Jordan. <laughs> Have any malice towards Mr. Roy Keane? No, yeah, lovely right. gentleman. Because you're chickens. It's horrible. Sooners hates everything, everyone. I think apart great. from Mardi Gras, which is quite partial. De Gea, right? You, he gets bad games. Sure, he's consistent. He's not. He's not like the greatest thing has oh. ever, ever, ever been there. But he's, you know, he's solid. You know, absolutely solid. The other one was Jordan Pickford. Now, Jordan Pickford is 25 years of age. Right? He's probably, he's been pretty consistent. He makes some errors time to time. It's very hard to judge a goalkeeper in the same way that you can judge a striker because, one, if you make one error... pretty much impossible. If you make one error as a striker, chances are you get another opportunity coming along at some point. Goalkeeper makes one error, even if he's been superb for the other 89 minutes of the match. He makes one error and he's a villain. The other way of looking at it is you can't... You've got XG and things like that. It's immeasurable right now. You can't do that with goalkeepers at all because... 
So if you're just judging who the best goalkeeper is on how many clean sheets they've kept, you're not actually judging the goalkeeper as an individual. You're judging the whole defensive unit and structure of the side. I think a great example of what is happening with uh, Pickford and De Gea is what has happened to Joe Hart. Mm -hmm. Joe Hart was young English goalkeeper playing for a title winning Man no City. Wrong. Could do no wrong. And he had a bit of a blip in form and then everybody pounced on him. And now the lad yep. is third choice Burnley keeper. And I think there's rumours of him maybe getting a move to bottom end championship. And this is a class goalkeeper whose confidence has been rocked yep. by mm. by your soonest of the world who thrive on people well, doing some um, any mistake. And it's it's sad it's, to see it's sad it's, to see and it's gonna it's gonna put uh, uh, it's gonna put else? young keepers off. From a footballing side of it, I think it can be difficult for players and for managers. And I think it's really important that we do discuss it and we do talk about it. For me, bringing an issue, I guess, to life, I think is the first step in, in overcoming it. If Jordan Pickford falls prey to this type of behaviour and loses his confidence and, and loses like loses mental strength in terms of handling the situation, loses his shit. that is quickly how things go downhill. And like, there's another example as well when, when people necessarily choose targets because they need a head on a plate, right? Usually yeah. they, need, they need to blame someone or point fingers at whoever. It's massive, yeah. You know, I feel like I've been in t at times where my mentality and my, my mental health wasn't at its best and it's, it's affected everything. You know, it's affected my football, it's affected my personal relationships, it's affected everything. And, you know, I think you don't realise how much of, a, um, of an impact it kind of does have um, on the rest of your life. The campaigns for um, mental health are clear to see. It's great now. People are talking about it. Professional footballers are coming out being open about their experiences. However, it will never get past the fully the, the proper stage where support is available when people will sit in a studio having just watched a game of football and these are people who've played the game and you think would understand the pressures more than anybody and they can look at a 25 year old man who's made six saves but then let in one that yep. they deem is savable yep. and they destroy him and then everybody online then <clears> goes <throat> oh yeah he's yeah, rubbish he's trash. rubbish yeah I agree and all of a sudden then there's like a chant about him people say like Pickford's got tiny arms and all of a sudden they're going is he going to get in the Euro squad what does that all do from to, that? Somebody, to somebody it's very easy to tell someone to go and speak to someone, but I think for them to actually get up and do it themselves is is it's a very difficult thing to do. There's a great um, great Twitter account called uh, Goalkeepers Union. Which is that really okay. long, friend. Who knows? Whoever you confide in may have experience with a similar thing and have techniques themselves that can help you yeah, overcome whatever issue it may be. Right, so the last few days have had some incidents in German football. Fan protests have caused the games to be, um, well, not abandoned, but stopped. It ended, you know, with the, uh, where they were just passing the ball to each other for the first, last, like, what, 13 minutes yeah. or something. The problem that I have with it, I'll start with the problem, is that uh, I don't, I'd love to know where this energy is when it comes to people that get racially abused on the football field, that loads of white, powerful men who run German football have taken it upon themselves to basically say that they care, they care more about fans protesting owners than they do care about players getting racially abused. German football is the 50 plus one rule that it's all about fans' ownership of clubs, protecting the interests, which is a nice rule they've got set up. But in this particular case, Dietmar Hopp, owns 96% of the club. He's a former youth player for Hoffenheim. It's his boyhood club. He's come in, he's got money, he's earned money, and he's invested it in his team, turned him into a big side, and everyone's gone loopy about it. Yeah. So going back to what you said, I know you can only solve one problem at a time, but why aren't people going loopy about racism, about mm -hmm. ongoing, you know, uh, sexist problems in football and the gulf between women's football and men's football. Why, why, why are Can people I, up in arms about that as opposed to a man who's earned his money spending on his boyhood club? I, that's the bit that doesn't sit right. This is a group who are actually a really positive impact on modern football. And they're being criticised now. They're in the eye of the storm 
because they decided, oh, hang on a minute, they're, they're saying nasty things about a very rich white person. There's no bigger issue in world football right now, especially in Germany, of racism and the rise of the far right. This is what I'm saying. It's proof that business reigns supreme within yes. football. Hi, I'm Chris Smalling for Peter. Anyone who knows me knows how much my dogs, Reuben and Miley, mean to me. Be your dog's biggest defender. Never leave them in a parked car, even for a minute. Keep them cool. You'll be glad you did. Thank you very much for listening, for watching, for however you're digesting this. Thank you for digesting it. Thank you very much, Jordan. Special guest, Jordan. He's a guest. Thank you very much to Bendy Geddig Media for producing this podcast each and every week. Uh, you can go follow us on Twitter at Attached Land Brand, everywhere you get social interaction online. What if, what if people in 80 years listen to this back? I know it's mad, isn't it? What line from today is part of people's. I like story? him to take into consideration the goalkeeping predominantly. I think it's going to be Patterson scoring goals. Mm. Cardiff City. <laughs> Pickford having little arms. Pickford, little arms. Little arms. Mm. Little arms. That's that, this episode done. Yeah, that's it. Thank Any other right. business, anyone? Any other business? Yes. Mm. Uh... Patterson scoring goals. Mm.